council meeting to session, and I would ask you to join me by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Following the Pledge of Allegiance, I'll ask for Reverend Zach Hash, pastor of the Pisgah United Methodist Church, and member of the Historic Review Board of the Town Tazewell, to have our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reverend Hatch. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come to you today, we are thankful for this day that you've given us. God, we come here tonight thanking you for allowing us to live in this place, this beautiful place to call home, this place that you have blessed, and we feel blessed to live here. God, we ask that you be with us tonight, be with the council tonight. We ask that all that is said and all that is done give glory to you. And God, we ask that you be with us as we continue to meet. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We have some special presentations to be made tonight, and I have to ask you all for a point of personal privilege for just a moment so I can share a little story with you concerning our first presentation. A few weeks ago, with the passing of my friend and longtime colleague, Mr. Lucian Peary, I was reminded of many opportunities I had had when Lou would take time out of his own busy schedule, and Sandra did too, I might add, to speak to my senior government classes upon occasion. They would do that during our study of the Civil Rights Union because I wanted my students, Sorry, sir. I wanted my students to have the opportunity to understand what the Civil Rights Movement was all about from really a perspective of what it was to their community not only their country, but here in Tasman as well. Lou would recount how he grew up with young African-American friends and white friends here in Tasman, and they played sandlot ball together, and they ate at each other's dinner tables, and they even spent Saturday nights at one another's home. But sad but true, on Monday morning, those same young boys were not able to go to school together because of the laws in the Commonwealth of Virginia at that time. Laws at that time required the young African-American youth and white youth to attend separate schools. He shared how he was, as a teenager, riding a bus every day to Tazewell County High School in Bluefield, where he and other Tazewell County African-American youth, young people, those from Tazewell, as well as Bluefield, as well as Pocahontas, were bused each day some of them more than an hour and a half one way for one reason the color of their skin he did not share this out of anger he didn't share it out of bitterness but he shared it out of his memories as a young boy growing up here and his story helped me and my students better understand what segregation was really all about thanks to Lou my students and their teacher were better able to understand that era in our country, much more so than we could have by reading a textbook, much more than could have been outlined by their young teacher at the time. He could share from his personal experiences firsthand accounts of one of the biggest challenges that I suspect this community ever saw. He also shared how everyone in this community did not easily accept that approaching change. Nevertheless, Lou was quick to point out that Tazewell moved forward with integration really much more easily and readily than other communities did at the same time. He shared how the principal at the time, Eugene Ross, and how the teachers at the time in the 1960s at Tazewell High School accepted the adjustment and made several dozen African-American students welcome to Tazewell High School. Change had to be difficult for those young people not to mention the older people, but they stood up and accepted the challenge of their day. They made it possible and easier for their school and for their community to move forward. They made the future 
better for us, the generations that would follow. Integration came to task in the 1960s. It should have come a lot sooner. But when it did arrive, people like Lou Peary led the way for a better and brighter future for all of Tazewell's citizens. <coughs> Thanks in part to those changes, Lou would become an outstanding teacher and an outstanding coach for scores of Tazewell's young people. He was a great coach. And he was a sports legend himself. But perhaps most important, Lou was a gentleman. He was a friend. Lou Perry was the role model that young people then and today need. Thank you, Coach. I'm going to ask Sandra if she would come up. Resolution of Honor. Whereas from the beginning, the Tazewell High School baseball program in 1978, Coach Lucian Lou Peary has been a central figure in the community and is, this community is feeling an enormous loss. Whereas Coach Peary was a mentor to all who knew him and focused daily on building the character of youth. Whereas Coach Peary over the years has taught by example, not only to youth, but also to our community, how to respect and appreciate one another as athletes and as citizens. <coughs> Whereas Coach Peary has established the criteria for future generations, future coaches, leaders of all types to try and follow, which is the difference in being a team player other than just playing for the team. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Terry W. Mullins, Vice Mayor of the Town of Tassel, and the citizens concurring to hereby commend Coach Peary for his excellent community service and present this token of appreciation to Coach Peary's family with their condolences. Adopted this 14th day of January, 20. We also have other special recognition this evening, and I'd like to address that just briefly. I'm very appreciative tonight for the work that was done recently by some members of our community that all of us have very much enjoyed over the past several weeks. I'm talking about the work that was completed by Claudine Marshall, Kim Santala, Donnie Pruitt, and his public works staff to bring back the unique beauty of Tassel's Main Street this winter. Claudine had an idea. She had a dream. And that vision became reality due to her partnership with Kim and members of our town staff who worked together to bring that vision to reality. I know you all have put in many long hours to pull in or to pull this transfer, transformation off, but it was well worth it. I have heard literally from scores, and I mean scores of people who were excited and overjoyed to see Tazewell's unique Main Street lights recreated this season. I hear it all the time. I heard it even before I came to this meeting tonight from two people. It's ongoing, and we want to recognize you, and we would like to ask you to come forward and accept our appreciation. I get the hug on. 
Fuck you, ladies. <laughs> I wish everyone who helped put this together could be here this evening, but for some reason or another, they're not here. Um, but with honor, Terry has tears. I, when I'm happy, I get teary. Um, with honor, I, I accept this recognition on behalf of um, the Garden Club, Elena Collins helped with that. Ladies came out. We had, I think, like 14 volunteers that day. And um, some of them are a little crooked. We'll tweak them next year, I promise. <laughs> um, along with doing other things. And again, um, to our town manager, thank you for believing in this project and Terry. Um, was just wonderful in supporting me, and um, I do want to say my grandson's here tonight to <laughs> to um, uh, be happy with this recognition as well. Chase from um, away from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> so anyway, I could talk forever about our main street and our main street life. It only gets better with another year, it will get better. Thank you, Terry. Marcy is uh, the director or the founder of the New Beginnings of Palmieri 
Rehabilitation Corporation, and we'd like for you to be recognized and to share a little bit with the community about what your business is all about. Well, my name is Marcy Tate, and I am the founder and CEO of New Beginnings Pulmonary Rehab. We have been in business seven years in the great state of Virginia. We started our business over in Norton, Virginia. We now have a clinic in South Williamson, Kentucky, one in Wattsburg, Kentucky, and now we've got our fourth jewel and final jewel in our crown, and that's Tazewell. And uh, I just want to say what an honor it is for me to be here. I actually used to work in this area. I was a pharmaceutical rep for many, many years. I served on your PNT committee at your hospital back when it, before it became Carillion, it was just a local hospital. So a lot of you may not know me, but I've been in your town for a long time. As a matter of fact, about 23 years now that I've worked in Tazewell. Uh, New Beginnings is a specialized clinic. We do not just do pulmonary rehabilitation. We do um, specialize in black lung, co-workers pneumoconiosis. And as many of you are probably aware, we now have an epidemic in this area. We have over 3,000 men who are diagnosed with progressive massive fibrosis which is the worst of the worst complicated cases of black lung. I have the honor and the privilege of serving about 300 of those men in the four clinics. We officially opened our doors Monday. We already have seven new patients and 11 new referrals. And uh, one of our workers' compensation um, companies that I work with specifically has pulled the data. And within a 30 mile radius of this location, there's 166 men who meet our services. So I consider that an enormous amount of honor to do, to provide care for these guys. I love my coal miners. My daddy's a coal miner. I'm a coal miner's daughter. And uh, I know how hard they worked, and so I take it very seriously. Um, a couple, one of my guys are here tonight, and I appreciate that. Um, we have actually been taking care of a lot of your men from Tazewell for many years, and they've been driving to Norton, 189 miles to get care. So what we do changes lives. And that's what I told Alicia at the hospital when I started. I said, we are here to change lives, to change outcomes, to change their quality of life. So it's an honor and privilege to finally be here. And by the way, I love your town. I love your town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with this place. But it's wonderful for me to be here, and I thank you very much. Where is your office located? We are located in Carilion in the actual hospital in the old outpatient um, clinic in the back that's been empty for a long time. So yes sir, we are located there. Um, we are there on Mondays and Wednesdays for it right now and then um, we will be Monday through Thursday um, in the very near future. Uh, we already have two full-time employees hired locally from this area. They're so going to begin their training process. And so myself and two of my um, Weathered, I guess, or uh, I guess the uh, longest acting employees are actually starting this clinic because we want to introduce ourselves and let them know what we stand for and, and how we, we do things. Great. Glad you're here. And we would like to present you, since you love our town and we love having you here. Thank you. A few things. And Pauline, we want you to have that as well for all your work and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't do this all the time, so if we get something out of order, just hang with me. We'll get there. At this time, uh, we have approval of the minutes. Is there someone who would so move? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Same thing. Okay, approval of the financial statements and financial report. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Conference and committee update. Planning Commission Committee. Our council member Davis is on that. Uh, council member Davis, could you share with us? Um, most of our meeting last Monday, we had an individual that was looking at opening 
a, um, a vacation home in their community. And basically the meeting was about what the current regulations are right now versus what the regulations will be assuming the revisions pass. Um, and talking to that individual to help them to determine when they wanted to apply for this um, permit. And that was pretty much, actually a pretty long meeting. <laughs> that was short. Uh, <laughs> to home. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Are there comments from other members of the council tonight? Uh, I'd like to make another comment. Uh, reference to the water breaks in town, I know there's probably over 80. And I hope in the future that we can do something with our water line system, re, uh, replace it. That way we can start infrastructure from the bottom and work up. We can have our roads paved, have our sidewalks uh, uh, curb and gutter. And I'd like to see that in the future for the infrastructure part to grow in town Tasman because we're having a lot of water breaks. Um, I like to see something come up about this. Uh, and it's a kind of uh, uh, grants. And if we can move some grants, uh, I'd like to get this started. But their water lines have been in the underground since the 40s, late 40s, or early 50s. And now we're getting, we're getting the buck of it. And it's, they're breaking everywhere. And the water pressure from the water plant, uh, I don't know if they still got the pressure up or if they can reduce the pressure some, but we need to work something out on that. That's all I have to say. But the out down crew has done a fantastic job. And manager, you've done a good job with what you're doing and uh, keeping everybody in line. Thank you. Well, any other comments from the councilman? I would like to echo, we certainly appreciate all the work that the town's doing to deal with the situation we're having, that we've been faced with. From the top management down, we want you to know your hard work does not go unnoticed, and we do appreciate it because it has not been easy. It's not easy for us, and I'm sure it's not easy for you either. Uh, I've never seen an obstacle you couldn't bulldoze your way through, though, so I'm sure we're going to get there with this one and bulldozing is very little in what's been going on with our public works <laughs> employees recently facing their challenges head on no matter what they be. So thank you for keeping this place going and thank you for doing it somehow with a smile on your face because it's not always easy. But we appreciate your positivity. We're proud and we're thankful that you're on our team. Thank you for the kind work. We appreciate the encouragement. Unfinished business update on Lincolnshire Park. Manager Day. All right, I want to give just a little bit of, of an update on a project that we all know seems to be dragging on in, in great length, and not to mention it's actually a, a topic that, that that's on my plate. Seems like every day, but I want to go back a little bit. And, give a little bit of update of how this came about. The town of Tazewell had an offer a, a number of months ago, and Jay Schott came before this governed body and offered to build two new fields, two new ball fields. Um, in trade for that, his idea was to expand his economic background, improve the economy in the area, and also alleviate two fields that we all know leave a lot to be desired. So the other day when it rained, you could have stopped trout in the field. Everybody's aware of that. So to me as manager, it was an obvious positive move if we could get two new fields and replace two old dilapidated fields plus help a business that to date has put north of 1.5 million dollars in this community just in the last couple of years maybe not even a couple of years so we entered into a very controversial i'll use that word contract 
I'll also say that the communication through my office to other boards left a lot to be desired. The time frame in which we had to act, it's hard enough to communicate uh, when you've got months. So earlier in the meeting, the Planning Commission has been working on a project zoning up, looking at boundary adjustments for you know three or four years. So it seems like the smallest thing takes local government forever to accomplish. The uh, the IDA along with the town council looked and evaluated the contract we sent the contract to little league we sent it to the shot foundation both of those boards being the town council and the ida worked very diligently and very hard to create the contract to where it protected literally and i want to echo that if anybody has any questions about that, I encourage you to come see me at a later date. But we've never, nor are we starting now, going to ever hurt our children. Contrary to the rumors that may be out there, it's not the intent to ever hurt our kids. But if we can get two brand new fields somewhere, I believe we owe it to the community and our young people and our youth to evaluate and look at it. So we did so. One of the issues that we negotiated during that time, which is also in the contract, is a temporary location if they wanted to proceed with any haste. And needless to say, they've not wanted to proceed with any haste. But there was a, a good recommendation and an idea brought up in a community meeting, which was right here. And that recommendation was that we convert Lincolnshire to a more multi-purpose facility. Meaning that we convert Lincolnshire to where they could have tournament play on those fields. So right now those fields do not accommodate little league sanctioned games or softball fields. So we don't want to take anything away from softball. We don't want to take anything away from soccer. But if we can move those bases or make those bases to where they're mobile and also do some fence work, some removable fence work, just like it's out there now from time to time. Fences that you can remove, put in. If we can do some upgrades out there and have sanctioned tournaments, instead of having a parking problem just on Main Street during tournaments, I can have them on that in the town too. And as town manager, as awful as it may seem to some, I like having parking problems for that reason. I embrace those parking problems for that reason. So it grows the economy, the businesses in and around the town of Tazewell thrive. Um, there's been events in this town where local restaurants have ran out of food. That's a good thing. So we made the offer to Little League in right. So the offer was made to Little League to upgrade Lincolnshire regardless of back of the draft. So to elaborate on that and to quantify that, if back of the dragon never existed, or if they folded it today and left, the idea was to upgrade Lincolnshire regardless. Okay, that's in makes no difference about back and drag. So a couple of months ago, and I don't have a date in front of me, we've had a couple of meetings here. Um, a lot of people sit or asking me, how come that project hadn't taken off? And I honestly don't really have an answer. I feel like uh, it, it's a little discouraging uh, and there's probably a lot more to it because I'm not a little league uh, 
I, I don't have any kids in, in baseball where I'm involved or softball where I'm involved. So I'm not real sure. Um, I do know this, that it's gone on so long now that it virtually defies the laws of physics for, for the upgrades to take place and take advantage of it this summer. There's, I just don't know how to do it. So there's, I don't, there's not enough manpower, it's not enough time, there's other projects on the table. And you know what I'd like to do is leave the idea and the offer on the table. I just know as manager, I can't leave it as a priority to be completed this upcoming season. It's just not enough time. So I know that being Rosado, the rec director, has been hovering around softball, men's softball. So we, we let Little League know in a meeting here, and some of your elected officials were in this meeting, other individuals in the community, several individuals in the community were here, but we made it real clear that Little League took priority over men's softball. That came out of my mind. That wasn't a reflection of the town council. But I felt like that our youth in the community and surrounding area were more important than a bunch of, and I like to play softball, than a bunch of guys getting together playing softball out there. So if I, if I could create a change in those fields and have more areas for our youth to to enjoy, you know, another social activity, grow the economy, it just made perfect sense. But for whatever reason, I have I have failed to communicate that somehow. And there's been a there's been a, a lot of correspondence that's taken place. And I, I did today, uh, this evening, receive another email from the chairperson of the little league and um, uh, the response that I got uh, it, I'm, I, I just need to evaluate it some more uh, but it's kind of way off way off of what we offer to do I'll put it that way um, and those emails are for your privilege so um, I'm still struggling with communicating and maybe it's me. I still have people call me and ask me why garbage is not picked up on Christmas Day. So, um, but I just want to put that out there. I want the community to know that you know this council, this IDA we have, this planning commission, those members are here, work hard at what we do, and I can assure you that there's nobody in local government here that in any way at all would ever fathom. I mean, I got a young daughter and hurting any of our youth in any way or taking anything away from them. And there will always be a place, whether it's these existing fields or new fields or temporary fields for a year or summer until new ones are built, we will always make sure that our youth have somewhere to continue to play ball at. And, you know, I can't imagine who the individual is or who is leaning away from that. But there are some individuals in this community that don't want to see that. For whatever reason, don't want to see it upgraded. And I don't know why. I don't have an answer to it. And all I can tell you is I've, you know, I've written letters and on town letterheads and offered a free ride, by the way. Free ride. Town's going to pay for it. Free ride to upgrade fields. For some reason or another, it just keeps, I just, I don't have an answer to it. But I just wanted to let, give cancel in the public an update on where it's going. I really can't tell you why it's not been done yet. I would have, I would have thought when we first brought it up that it, it would have been jumped on immediately and somebody would have walked up to you, cancel and hug you and thank you and shook your hand. And, but no. For some reason, I just, I don't have an answer to it, but 
I want to let you know that this town manager and my staff, <clears throat> the 80 employees I've got, and this town council and the IDA, and uh, we're all ready. And we have made a diligent offer. Why it's not being accepted is beyond my comprehension, sir. Anyway, any questions? <laughs> Thank you. I felt like the offer was clear. I was at the public meeting. My question is, how long is this offer going to remain open? Well, you know, um, our, our, our kids are always going to be important to us. And, and I would like to be able to say that I could leave it open for forever. But I've got a budget to be. You know, I've got projects to move forward to. I've got projects that we've got to do, other things that we've got to make happen. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of at a loss. I really am. I'm kind of at a loss of understanding. I, I don't. I don't know. I'm, I apologize for that answer. I know it's not what you want to hear, but uh, I don't. I don't have an answer to that question right now. I was at both meetings with the little league. Partial board, many representatives will call them. And at both meetings, they were both receptive to it. But that, for whatever reasons, once we leave the meeting, attitudes changed. So um, I know it's been frustrating for our manager. It's taken a lot of time um, away from doing other projects. And um, I never would have thought it would have been this hard to give away money. <coughs> taxpayer money that's been well thought out that the IEA has done a great job of, of looking at that um, and I think just to be clear um, and I think as time passes the likelihood of the shop people purchasing the league field probably is reducing over time sure. which means that we're still going to have those two fields but now we get to add two more fields. And if you can think about how much more you can attract in terms of weekend tournaments with four fields versus two fields, um, not to mention practice time and, and, and just space for our kids to, to, to grow and learn the game, I just don't get it. So um, I would like to say that, um, and I'm speaking for this council in this moment, that there is not a single person on this bench that doesn't want anything but the best thing for our kids. Um, we've all served on multiple boards on this council. We have people that have been in public service for 20, 30, I don't even know how many years as an officer, teachers. Um, Nancy, on the end, you guys probably don't know this story, but um, when we sat here, I don't know, five years ago, and we were trying to get Main Street going, and we were trying to figure out how we can do something besides have a Coca-Cola machine on Main Street. And Todd met Nancy somewhere up on Main Street and says, I just need the first person to step out on the dance floor. And the lady on the end is the person that did that. And she's the one that renovated Lemons Jewelers. Just to show you the amount of the, the desire that this bench wants for this community to grow and prosper. That's just one example. So um, I assure you, there's not a single person on this bench that doesn't want the best for our kids and the best for our town. Has the property uh, the console loans over on Maplewood been looked at in for a ball field or a parking lot or, or a soccer complex for either the high school or the whole club? We have. We, we looked at a we looked at that property even made all un, unofficial offers on that property um but even with that even if you uh take that out of the equation we're still wanting to upgrade lancashire you know whether they build new fields or not and I, I can't i can't even give that away <laughs> i'm telling you it's, it's uh I, I've, I've never seen anything like it and to believe that there's individuals in the community that don't want to see two new two ball fields, I mean the Lincolnshire fields upgrade. There's actually people that don't want to see two new ball fields. All right, they, it, I know it's hard to believe, but they just and I don't know why. I just I can't. I don't get it. Don't it just looks like to me that piece of property there beside the high school would be very good for that. You know, even for the school and more parking, uh, a complex. 
Very frankly, that would take that would take the purchase of that property and whoever look if it's part of that contract, they they purchase that, they and then they created it. They make it into two awesome fields. We don't have within our budget the ability to do that. So should that not happen, whether it's there or another a few locations that the IDA that Joe Beasley's on has identified, if if that doesn't happen, we still want the opportunity to have better play and better fields and still four fields. And that's what this discussion was. Thank you. Yeah. Might have to little league field that day as well. Yes, sir. Okay, new business. We have the second reading of the amendment to the 20, chapter 23 of zoning. <coughs> and Attorney Pyatt is going to tell us about that. Yes, sir. The first reading back in December, you have, of course, for the ordinance to pass. That's that two readings after public hearing on this particular topic for zoning. Um, I think you might be wanting to entertain a motion to waive the second reading, or if so you'd like for me to read, I'll, I'll make that I'll take up the next yeah. 30 minutes of your time. <laughs> All in favor of waiving the reading? Aye. 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 Proceed. With a waiver of the reading, this will be the second reading. You'll be now to entertain a motion for not the actual amendment, the amended ordinance to be passed. Is there such a motion? I'll make a motion to pass the chapter 23 zone. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. All right, with that passage, of course, it takes effect 30 days from today unless council then moves to pass it as an emergency ordinance to take effect immediately. So you do have that option, but you have to make a motion to that effect and have a second vote to make it effective. I would like to ask council for consideration of that, and I'll tell you why. Um, due to a multitude of reasons, the, the Litz House on Marion is being held, as you know, it's sold. And it's being held up right now because of um, this basically communication problem. But um, I would ask council to consider passing this motion so that they can proceed on one of the three models and doing the upgrades they need for that this house. Um, I know some of you are very familiar with that. The sign committee been looked at? Uh, this is about uh, we had a discussion in with Council Wood, but uh, yes, I think we are pretty much on trying to try to help move things along. We'd like to see how it passes in the situation. I'll make a motion. motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there a discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Now we have the first reading for the amendment to Chapter 5 buildings and attorney Pike. At the request of the Planning Commission has also been before you um, with the public hearing you had earlier tonight relative to the amendments to Chapter 5, which is the part of our code deal with buildings and building permits. Uh, Mr. Hurley has prepared, uh, basically proposed through my draft, modifications to three different, excuse me, three separate uh, sections within Chapter 5 under Section 5.1 Statewide Building Code Enforcement, and uh, basically adopting Parts 1 and 2, and Chris, you correct me if I'm wrong on this, but Parts 1 and 2 of the Uniform Statewide Building Code, which at this point in time, the town had adopted Part 3, but not Parts 1 and 2. Then also dealing with building permits, there's a revised schedule, which is then seen in section 5-29, uh, which sets forth a modified schedule, basically in line, much more so with those found around the state. So with your first reading, you can, of course, again, there can be a waiver, need to be, to be the case, or if you'd like, I'll go through and, and read, read this. This is not nearly as extensive as the chapter 23 amendments. Um, so it wouldn't take as long, but still you have the option of saying thanks or no thanks. And <coughs> make a motion to waive. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor of waiving the reading? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Like so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this will be the first reading. Second reading will be the next council meeting. And we'll proceed there, of course. When um, the vote will be taken at the next council in February. Uh, historic Review Board members, uh, Manager Day. You've got two um, members on the Historic Review Board that need to be reappointed. And I think, Terry, you had a conversation and we're good. 
All right, uh, the terms presently are May 14th through December 31st, 19. The reappointment would be from January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2022. I'll move to. And those members, by the way, are Roger Weaver, I'm sorry. Roger Weaver and uh, Dr. Terry Mullins. I move to reappoint Roger and Weaver and Terry Mullins to the Historic Review Board. Is there, <coughs> is there any discussion? All in favor of reappointing Roger Weaver and myself to the Historic Review Board, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The SEGRA discussion, attorney Fight. <coughs> A couple weeks back, uh, Chris had contacted me uh, about an application that was made for a zoning permit by a company by the name of Segra. And Chris, you, know, you can fill counseling on this if you need to, relative to some telecommunication upgrades in front of First Community Bank. Right, yeah. They were asking for a zoning permit and said that they were acting under a franchise, which they had just been renamed from Lumos. You all granted a franchise to Lumos Networks back in 2017. When I looked into it for Chris, uh, come to find out they are part of Blue Moose, but it was a merger that took place in 2019 between two companies, uh, Blue Moose Networks and a group called Spirit Communications. Uh, under your existing franchise ordinance, uh, if there is any type of a, a sale or transfer, and it would require your consent for this particular franchise transfer from Lumos to Segre, even though it is a partial name change, it's also a merger between two different companies, the council would have to consent to that. <coughs> I informed Mr. Josh Frith, let him know about the concerns that I had as town attorney as to whether or not they would be able to act under the terms of the franchise, the existing franchise, without the council's consent. Sent him an email to that effect, and that was done on the 3rd of January, and I have not heard back from him. Uh, my recommendation was to, for Chris was that he withhold uh, the permit uh, grant until we got further information from Mr. Frith to somehow designate and know this was strictly a name change. There wasn't any type of merger that would make it to where Segura was actually acting under the same franchise as Lumos as the same entity under a different name. And we haven't heard any communications back. I know that I haven't. I don't know that the manager has or Chris has. So relative to that, I think there would have to be a formal request from Segra that you all grant the franchise basically to them or the merger effect of, of Segra between Spirit and Lumos Communications, Lumos, excuse me, Lumos Network, uh, before such permit would be allowed one of that franchise. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's move to the Main Street designation and then we'll Okay, this is what we spoke about in the work session. If you'd like, uh, Vice Mayor Bones, I can read it or you can prefer to already lay one here. The resolution of support. This is the resolution of support for the Main Street designation for the town of Tassel. Whereas Tassel today desires to submit an application for Virginia Main Street designation, and whereas this designation would help continue efforts to revitalize our Main Street, now therefore be it resolved that the town council of the town of Tazewell hereby supports this application and also pledges $25,000 per year for the next three years to help support Tazewell today financially to move toward the Main Street program. Adopted this 14th day of January 2020. Terry Mullins, Vice Mayor. Just do a motion and second. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Do you have that as a line item and a budget here forward? Yes. Any additional discussion? Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The resolution support is approved. This time we will back up to uh, Item D, number three, all the presentations and Foreman Stone with Robinson Farmer Cox and Associates. Hey, cool. What are you see? <coughs> They're doing okay. <laughs> Got a handout for you guys. Light reading. Light reading, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
the cliff next to the wall. Yes, ma'am. Give me another one. Oh, okay. Here's his way. First of all, thanks for having me here tonight. The, the audit is 81 pages long, so we're not going to go through any page of that document. Um, the audit went well. We did have some findings in the back of the audit report. Uh, we did recommend quite a number of adjusting entries. And um, the, the town treasurer is still learning uh, a lot of the things that she needs to do to prepare financial statements in accordance with uh, reporting standards. Uh, but we are seeing some improvement there. The handout I had, really we'll call it the cliff notes to the audit report, that I just passed out and we'll, we'll go over page one to start with. Um, and really we, we're looking at a couple things. General fund balance at the, at the very top from 2011 to 2019. You see we, 2011 we were just under, just under $300,000. In general fund balance, we peaked in 2016 at $1.2 million. And then, of course, the town's had several projects since then. Fund balance is down to just, un just under $104,000 at the end of 2018. Um, a town this size, we would like to see it closer to that million dollar range uh, of fund balance. So we think at $100,000, it's, it's a little too low. Uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I think somebody said that last year as well. I said I wanted it higher than the 223, but um, but it's there. And really, and, and I'll, I'll mention in just a second what's driving that, you know, from, from my perspective. Um, water and sewer net assets, you can see the end of the year at uh, three point nine, just under $4 million. Um, and net assets for water and sewer fund, that includes the depreciated value of your lines that are in the ground. So you can't dig them up and sell them, but they're included in the, essentially the overall value of that, that system, uh, including any cash receivables, that sort of thing. You haven't been around there, Well, they make the copper ones. They the copper ones. <laughs> uh, cash and investments. Uh, total cash investments, $431,000 at the end of the year. That includes water and sewer, cash and water and sewer funds, and the uh, general fund. Outstanding debt, $4.2 million uh, between the general fund and the enterprise funds uh, at the end of the year. And then our debt per capita. And then we, we list out your pension liability and what we call OPEB liabilities. Those are post-employment benefits. Uh, life insurance, load of benefits, things of that nature, uh, the projected um, liabilities that exist. And actually, for your pension liabilities, you have negative liabilities, so you essentially overfunded your pension just a little bit at BRS. Uh, the OPEP liabilities are positive. Uh, population estimates, uh, you can see the end of the year, Bowen Cooper Center says you have about 4,200 people in town. Uh, the total debt per capita is $1,006. And really, probably the most important number from my estimation, it's just this decrease that you've had in population estimates. Um, 4,627 folks back in 2011, the just under 4,200 in 2019. Uh, so, anytime, obviously, anytime you, you your population is decreasing, the cost of government gets spread out over fewer people. Uh, so it makes it very difficult, and I think that's what we're seeing in that decrease in, in fund balance and those decreases in your cash balance. In that bottom line. Um, just kind of plain to us, at least. Uh, so in, in that regard, you know, going forward, what's the town got to do? You've got three choices. Um, raise revenues, reduce expenditures, or find more people. Uh, to spread these costs out. So, um, and the first two are probably the, you know, the more critical ones, or the ones you can really address. Uh, the next couple pages, page two through four, we have audit recommendations that weren't included in the audit report. So these, these are uh, more housekeeping items, cleaning up things, improving internal controls for the town. I won't go through all of those. Um, and in fact, we talked with Leanne just earlier this week. She said the town has already started implementing a number of these things. And I think the new software system uh, that you implemented will, will help with that. On, on a few. Pages five and six. Uh, we had to audit 
essentially what you're submitting to the Virginia Retirement System, not only the contributions you're making to the Virginia Retirement System, but also what you've reported in terms of personnel. So uh, they calculate liability and, in fact, your contribution rates based on census data. So if you've got an employee that's been here five years, they project what's the possibility of them retiring with the town, um, say another 25 years of retirement with the town, and then they essentially create a liability for that employee based on those probabilities, as well as the probability of how long they're going to live and if they're male or female. So we test that data to make sure what's being submitted is correct. And we did find any here. <clears throat> so you got a clean, clean opinion on pages five and six. Page seven is our letter to those charged with governance. It goes several pages, and we also include with that the adjusting entries we recommended to uh, to Leanne so that the folks can prepare the, the course of current report standards. Uh, the letter to those charged with governance, if we came in and had a problem uh, performing the audit, we report it to you here. You do you get the boilerplate letter. We didn't have any problems. Your, your staff was responsive. If we asked them for something, they gave it to us. We didn't have any problems during the audit. This also points out some of the more significant estimates and assumptions that are included in the financial statements. So it's kind of something to read in conjunction with the financial statements. And then finally, once we get past the adjusting entries on page 18, I have a list of all the new accounting standards that are going to um, affect local governments the next few years. Uh, just nighttime reading if you're having trouble sleeping. <laughs> um, it keeps auditors and accountants up at night and puts everybody else to sleep. So, um, but the accounting standards board has been very active. Uh, they received a, a pretty large infusion of cash several years, years ago um, based on some fees that were assessed to, to public companies. And they're spending that money. So they're coming up with a lot, a lot of new accounting standards. Uh, have been for the past seven or eight years. So that's, again, why your audit reports now are going to be 80 some pages long, 81 pages long. Um, you know, overall, the audit went well. Like I said, we, we did have some findings in the back about the adjusting entries that we had. Um, and and the, the main thing we're concerned about is just that, that fund balance. I think you're all aware of it. So I'll stop there and try to answer any questions that you have. Are there questions? Uh, I've got one for you, Corbin. The, the trend with the fund balance is obviously a, an equivalent reflection of population and declining economy, declining population. Um, if you could comment a little bit about just Southwest Virginia and your experience, period. And I guess what I won't cancel to hear is. Some of them are thinking maybe it's just us, but if you can just comment. No, on that it, it's, it's really not. Um, what we're seeing, I call it the urbanization of America. But what we're seeing, you know, our, our young folks are, are growing up, uh, going off to school, and probably moving to one of the more metropolitan areas. Uh, so we've got a declining population in, in most of the south and southwestern part of the state. Even in places that you wouldn't think so. I think Wythe County has a declining population uh, right there at the uh, intersection of 77 one so um yeah we're, we're seeing that across across the board in southwest virginia and it's it's a challenge um because if you lose population, you still have the same infrastructure to maintain you still got the same size town but fewer people to pay for all the services <coughs> um, so it's tough i mean um, I, I wish i had the answers um, but it's, it's tough but, Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. My contact information is on the front. Um, so don't hesitate to give me a call if you have any questions. Uh, if we can help you in any way, don't worry about getting bill the next day. I'm happy to help you any way I can. And he does, too. I want to echo that. It's not always been the same with the county, but I can tell you that uh, he. He spent a lot of time and always look for that bill. He probably said it now. I probably just reminded him. But it's been really good to work with, really has. Well, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our final item on the agenda tonight was financial comments, which I guess is appropriate from 
Yeah, I, I like to it, it, at least once every two years. And the reason for that, a lot of it's political, but I also think that the public um, deserves to know where the, the governor body is from time to time and trying to comprehend what he just gave you in an 85 page document. And it does, um, if you look at that document and you scratch your head, I can guarantee you that you're not the only one scratching your head. So it's a little complicated to understand. But um, I just want to say going into January the 1st, a snapshot in time, outside of bonds or any borrowed money such as for the paving or you know, the rainy lot that we've done. On December the 31st, at 8.21, I'm telling you why at 8.21, but we had a zero accounts payable. And we had positive numbers in all four enterprise funds. So that's a reflection of the mayor, his leadership is canceled. Your leadership, obviously staff and their ability to um, look at budgets and work with them. Uh, so I just I want to put that out there. I know what it feels like to, to come in and not be that way. So um, now, five hours later when we got the mail, <laughs> All right, we had accounts paid, but I'm just, I just want to put it out there. So, you know, you, you'll see, uh, as Corbin will tell you, you'll see 30 an hour with us. You'll see 60 an hour. Sometimes you'll, especially this time of year when the revenues are down, you'll see 90 an hour. And uh, another thing that you'll see us doing right now is adding to the due to from issue. So the general fund right now will slow down because of the lack of revenue after this tax season for a while uh, in water and sewer right now even though they're enterprise funds corbin will tell you he's humble but we sometimes dip into that area they're all in one account at the bank uh, so uh, but for a moment in time, we did have a, a zero account space. Just want to put that out. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Public comments tonight. We have one person who is signed to address the council, David Altizer. You would come to the front, tell us your name and uh, address. Yes, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is David Altizer. I'm the project utility manager for the Thrasher Group in the Beaver, West Virginia office. The address is 155 Blue Angel Lane, Beaver, West Virginia, 25813. I just want to introduce myself. Uh, you will have recently made us one of the engineers of record for General Engineering Services. I passed out my card. And we've got a lot of people working for uh, Thrasher. But I'll be your point of contact if you want to call me. Call anybody you want, Thrasher. But feel free to call me. And if it's not something I personally will take care of, I'll find the person who does that for you guys too. And um, we can do a lot of things for you all. But just what you mentioned about the rehabilitation of your water system, I would certainly consider just a courtesy, a formal informal meeting. If you want to organize something, I come down and we can sit down and talk about what, what the possible buildings you that thing moving are. Have to be with the manager. So, Tom, that's uh, if you'd like to set that up anytime. Absolutely. We actually uh, have a contractor job. We yes. actually do have your own retainer. Okay. Um, you, TNL, and there's one other, I forget who it is in the firm. So, I, I do have a number of contacts with the, with the West Virginia uh, office. Okay. So, I just want to come out and meet you guys and see what's going on and uh, introduce myself. And like I said, we're available if you want to let me know, just give me a call or an email. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This time we move to executive session where we have several items to be considered. Do I need to list those? Tom, I'm talking. I need to mention what we're going to do. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. Privacy of individuals unrelated to public business, award of the public contract involving expenditure of public funds involving a coffee shop and painted peak. 
Award of Public Contract Involving Expenditure of Public Funds, Little League Contract, Award of Public Contract Involving Expenditure of Public Funds, Negotiations Concerning the Lincolnshire Parks Concession Stand, uh, Consultation with Legal Counsel Pertaining to Actual or Probable Litigation, and Consultation with Legal Counsel Pertaining to Actual or Probable Litigation. Is there a motion that we go into executive session? I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. We will move to executive session. Thank you.